Well, it's been a while since I've done any updates, but I figured I'd get something onto it now and that I have uh, some major prep to do for a uh, little trip slash adventure I have coming up. So uh, we'll start with a few things I got going on. First up, I'm re finally replacing my upper shackle hanger with one from Offer of Design. <clears throat> I probably should have done this when I built the truck, but I was being kind of a cheap ass. This replaces the end frame upper spring hanger on the front of the truck. And one they make is very high quality. <clears throat> Comes with their new Kevlar bushings, which are supposed to be uh, almost indestructible. And uh, reasonable sleeves and all the hardware. The uh, old ones, don't mind the mess all over the floor here, are like this. It's a great big cast piece. It goes in the frame with rivets. You see, this one's just hammered. <clears throat> I have beat the snot out of it and it creaks and groans. And well, this bushing's small and the smaller bolt, it's only a half inch bolt. And it goes to a 9 with the uh, offer design kit. But there it is installed on this side. I haven't done the other one yet. <clears throat> the easiest thing is you knock the heads off with a uh, air chisel, pops them right off. Got to enlarge a hole ever so slight for the 716 bolt to go in. And uh, I tried the double hole saw trick, but it didn't work. So I actually used a uh, die grinder with a carbide burr. Because you got to slightly enlarge the hole for the new bracket to go through. Not a lot, but you got to enlarge it a little bit. And put her all in and bolt her up. Uh, other things I got going on. I'm gonna replace my old surplus center cheapy hydraulic cylinder for my assist with a PSC cylinder I've laying around. I'm gonna to try to mount it up higher. Things I've learned over the years. I mean, this one's worked forever, but it could stand to be a little higher. Let's see what else I gotta do. Uh, I think I'm going to change the flywheel in the truck. As well. Found out I really have the wrong flywheel in the truck, so if I got time, I'm gonna change it. I've also put a new drive shaft in, which is a stock front drive shaft for a like 99 to 04 Super Duty front drive shaft with a diesel. It fits perfectly in my truck. Just dumb luck. And uh, I have more off-road designs, bushings for my rear hangers, which has also seen better days. I'm also going to space them out correctly, too, because the sleeves really aren't long enough. And uh, Skyjacker was nice enough to let me try out a set of their new shocks here. They're the they're ADX 2.0s. It's their newest shock they just came out with. It's a full aluminum 2-inch bore with a remote reservoir. And I'm going to try to outboard them because the way they are currently on the truck, <clears throat> they're inside the frame, which is the way a one-ton trucks were. But when they're in that narrow, when you roll off a ledge or something, they don't have a lot of action to keep you from swaying from side to side. So I had a buddy, General Green Manufacturing, cut me up some new tabs to go right in here, to stick the shock back. And then I'm going to go up and mount to that cross member on my bed and get the shocks outboarded and uh, actually up higher and out of the way even better. So that's what we're at right now. Some other things coming. Uh, I might be trying out some new tires here real soon. But uh, other than that, that's a current update. Well, we're continuing on getting the truck ready. I said before that it was for a uh, trip adventure coming up. Well, it's actually for Ultimate Adventure this year. Uh, Bubba Rope is a sponsor, and I'm lucky enough that they want me to go to represent them with one of their uh, guys that work there riding along with me. So uh, we'll continue on with what else I've done, things I still need to do, and all the gear I could get ready well, to start. For. We uh, now have all the stickers from Bubba Rope on here. One on each door, one up on the hood. And uh, I have a Skyjacker sticker too because uh, Lonnie at uh, Skyjacker was nice enough to send me some new shocks they have, their ADX series. 
uh, mono tube, remote reservoir, really nice shocks. And while I was at it, I went ahead and outboarded them. They used to be inside the frame <clears throat> and I moved them to the outside of the frame, which helps me a lot. Because before this truck, if you dropped off a ledge, it was really tippy left to right. Well, if the shock's farther out, they have more dampening force to keep that tippiness away. So they've proved the ride on the road drastically too this way. So I don't know if it was the shocks or me outboarding it, but either way, it's a lot better on the road. Also, while I was at it, I uh, put new bushings for a off-road design in the upper hanger, and I actually put a cross bolt in my rear shackle to keep them from walking. So overall, it's just things I should have done and uh, multiple improvements. Up here in front, I think I talked about it before, I uh, went ahead and put a PSC steering cylinder on here. I've been running a uh, old tractor cylinder from Surface Center forever. So I went to this and I don't know if the other cylinder had a bad spot in it, but my return to center is vastly improved now. And also when I dig the clamp, you can see there, there's a set screw in it now. So I took it and drilled it and tapped it for a quarter 20 set screw. So I don't have to worry about it sliding on the aluminum rod. I really didn't have much of a problem with it before, but it's a little extra insurance and peace of mind. Let's talk about underneath here. <clears throat> Uh, Quigley 4x4 makes dry shafts now for anyone. Uh, they're the people that do the four-wheel drive van conversions. They've done it forever. Well, they uh, made me a new rear drive shaft. It's all proper and correct. So I'm running their drive shaft in the back. And my other one I'm carrying is a spare. I also uh, got the loveliness of pulling the doubler and transmission out of the truck because I thought I had a flywheel balance problem. I've been using the wrong flywheel, so I thought until I pulled it and realized it should have been fine. But we went ahead and changed the flywheel out. So it's got a new flywheel in it, pulled all that out and put it all back together again. Put my straighter front dry shaft in so it's not all bent. And then I got that all buttoned up. And then I found out, after I changed my clutch slave cylinder, which was leaking and going bad, which this truck eats them up every couple years, that my clutch master cylinder was really the problem this last time. So I put a new one of those on. So that's all good. The clutch release is really nice now. And uh, it's a lot smoother than it's been for a long time. So major improvements overall. Here's all the stuff that uh, Bubba Rope sent me to have on the truck for the trip. They pretty much sent me almost one of everything they have, which is probably a good thing because we're out there to promote them and show all the different equipment they actually have. And starting with, we have here a uh, tree saver that they have. It's actually super nice and actually rated. Uh, we have the smaller soft shackles, bigger soft shackles. We have a 7 8 recovery rope, uh, more soft shackles for it. That comes as a kit when they sell them. We have a toe strap, 20 footer, it's actually a rated strap. A winch line extension of 25 feet. Their actual winch line is 80 foot, which will fit on mine. And I don't know if anybody's ever noticed this. They have some of the best winch lines that are out there. Just not that well known for some reason. And it comes with a shaft shackle that you put in the eye so you don't have a hook. The end of it, it's all like a plastic molded piece. There's no metal in it whatsoever. And if you see like these little marks here, there's red marks on it every 10 feet. So you know how much winch line you have out. And of course it's red at the end so you don't pull out too far. It comes with a chafe guard that's Velcro so you can put it on anytime you need to. And uh, they have a unique system they call a grabber. I'll uh, try to do a video of me putting it together. But this actually sticks to the winch drum and you feed it through. And it won't let it come off. It's, it's hard to explain. You have to see how it actually works. But it's pretty ingenious actually if you ask me. And then we have uh, the larger Big Bubba rope, which is I think the inch or inch and a quarter rope. Have that. Uh, some more chafe guards that just 
Velcro on to protect soft shackles and then another chafe guard to go around the rope if it's got to go across something hard so it doesn't uh, damage the rope. So I gotta get all this stuff on. I made a rack to hang ropes off. This is some old bubble ropes. We can put the new ones up there. I haven't figured out where we can put all my soft shackles and everything. And uh, then this is some of the stuff that I gotta put in the toolbox. There's slave cylinders, there's master oil mat. You have to have a spill kit for Ultimate Adventure. And previous years, I just brought some oil mat and a little bit of oil dry in a, in a container, and that's been fine. Uh, tape measure, because I don't know how many times I've been on trips, and somebody always needs a tape measure. And I said, you know what, I'm finally going to get myself a tape measure. So we got one of those. Silver Sharpies. They're great for signing each other's roll cages and trucks. That's why I bring them. More tire plugs, a uh, fuel pump, and a strainer. And this is a generic power probe, which I've wanted one forever, so I got myself one. This is pretty cheap. It's like $25 on Amazon, and a normal power probe is like $200 and something, but it might be a total piece of crap, but I've got one. And plus all the other stuff I carry, which I'm going to go through later and uh, show all that. And everything I carry in there, with all my sockets and what tools I take and what parts I take, which in Ultimate Adventure, you really don't need to take as much stuff as people really think you do. So, if it's uh, something that's common and you can get at any old parts store, don't bring it with you. No need to weigh it down. If it's uh, something unique, like a special heim joint, special steering joint, oddball axle shaft... Something like that, yeah, I'll carry the spare with you. But this truck, almost everything on it's OEM parts. There isn't anything special. Tie rod ends are all normal OEM tie rod ends. Normal wheel bearings. Axle shafts are common Chevrolet 60 shafts. Rears are common 14 bolt shafts. Normal U-joints, 14 10s in the front, 13 50s in the back. So, and the engine is a... Uh, just a completely stock 8.1, so it's normal 8.1 sensors and stuff that you can get. Not a big deal. And the fuel pump, even though I carry spares, a real common fuel pump. It's for like a uh, 96 Chevrolet Vortec pickup, and it goes on my sending unit that I've got. So, you know, no need to carry, you know, the entire shop with you. I'll just put it that way. So, now I got a few things left. I got to put all that stuff on and in the truck i got a short list of little things you need to do like i need to make a piece that goes between the cab and the bed to keep the hot air from blowing up behind the cab so i can actually open the back window going down the highway I need to fill my co2 tank uh i need so i can get the backup lights to work i think i got a bad connection somewhere that's not the end of the world and uh that's really about it other than just driving it so i'll be driving it in the next week or so and uh, Ultimate Adventure is actually in about two weeks or so. So I need to get everything buttoned up. Okay, the way this works with the bubble rope winch line is that piece in there, you stick on your winch drum. You stick the rope under, through the loop on the side to your uh, right. Wrap it around five times and then put it through the side to the left. The way that works is the rope's on top of that and it cannot take more than the five loops off so no matter what you always have at least five wraps like you need on the winch. see the way that works is you cannot pull the line off anymore because it goes under itself pretty ingenious i also got a new set of milestar mto2s to try out on this trip uh they've got some changes from the ones the originals the outer lug here appears to be a little smaller and spaced wider and uh, hopefully that'll help out in muddy conditions because to be completely honest the original ones I wasn't that impressed with when it got in real muddy stuff they seemed like they packed up real bad but these are a lot more open and there's a big offset in the tread blocks so they should move some dirt pretty good and some very aggressive siphoning in the center so it should help on the rocks so we'll see what happens and, uh, I'll give an honest opinion when I'm done with them and uh, overall Taking the other tires off is a giant pain in the butt. I've got some pictures of me doing it. These uh, trail gear creeper locks that I run, the inside bead on them is an absolute burger. They uh, have a machined edge that's really sharp 
and the bell doesn't drop real quick. It's pretty much flat the whole way. So even when it starts to slide off the safety bead, it uh, doesn't want to just come off. It's pretty stout stuff. But uh, we about got everything wrapped up, I think. I just redid my breather. I found out my fan clutch is bad that I put on the other day, which not a shocker because, well, I pulled it out of a pile of parts that was in the shop. So not too uh, surprised by that. And uh, I think that's really about it. My list is super short of things I have left to do. So I'm gonna get ready and get all my camping gear gone through and get packed up and ready to go. And then uh, off to drive into parts unknown. Well, parts unknown for everybody else right now. I know where I'm going, but we can't really reveal that yet. So, we'll see uh, how it all goes.